One of the most mysterious places in the entire world is the middle of a magician's deck of cards. Let me show you what I mean right down here. Look. Deck can be shuffled. The deck can be wiped down by firemen with long hoses, so to speak. And let's see, we're going to take a playing card. In this case, the jack of clubs. Now watch. I'm going to do this slowly. I'm going to leave the jack just for a second on the table. We'll come back to the jack in a second. I'm also going to use another card, in this case, the seven. Watch the seven. I'm going to take the seven and tear off the corner of the seven. Then I'm going to slip the seven into the front of the pack and take the little piece of the seven and put it in the back of the deck inside the magician's pack. Watch the seven. Just like that, the seven is impossibly restored. But if we did that to the seven, what about the, uh, the jack? Look, take the jack, slip the jack in the middle of the deck. Just snap and look, look. Just like that. Whereas a moment ago, it was the seven that was harmed. Now it's the jack. Like I said, the middle of a magician's deck is the most mysterious place in the world. Master magician David Copperfield once said, uh, after that, after clearing his throat, he then said that the art of magic is in the performance of the magic. And that's, of course, true. And this is a great example. Very simple trick, a couple of double lifts, and the rest is about framing it, which for me is always a challenge. How do you get something like this where a whole bunch of things are happening and make sure people can follow clearly, that I can follow along, that it has a a logic that at the end, you know, at the end there's this sense of it finished the way it could, it not only could have ended, but should have ended. That sense of a right ending is always a challenge. So here, let's jump in. Let's look at the technical aspect of this. So first, I start by mentioning the fact that, you know, the middle of a magician's deck is a very mysterious place. Having said that, I come over, I'm going to do a double lift, which is to handle two cards as one. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. I, I, do use, I use a strike double. You can take a card off, sort of draw attention to it, Give it a flick, and while you're focusing here, you can push this off, pull it back with the thumb, and get a little break with the pinky. Then put this here. Now turn the whole thing over, okay? Or, in what I prefer is, like I said, is just a strike double, where the deck is slightly beveled to one side. The cards are a little beveled, beveled and it's just practice coming over and getting those two cards. It's a very knacky feel thing. It flows beautifully, but it will take practice. So I do a double lift. Deck can be shuffled, it's nice that way, showing the king and say, keep an eye on the king. And I handle the king very gingerly. I don't want to rush this part. I want them convinced the king is going down, but in fact, it's any old card. It doesn't really matter. So I put the king down and I say king, and I, use, I say the names of the cards a lot. I come over, I do another double lift, which of course really sells the idea that, that really is the king. And I say, and we'll use the four. And I turn the four over and I say, watch, keep your eye on the four. I'm going to try something weird with the four. And I say four a few times. I've actually the four is there and I'm taking the king. I tear the corner off, okay, making sure I don't flash it. You don't want one of these moments. Tear it off, okay, put the pieces down, pick up the deck. And again, the whole time, the four is just here. And I say, look, I'm going to slip the four in the front here and I'll take the little piece of the four and I keep saying four, four, four. And I slip that in the back. And this is going to the middle of the deck in the back. That's the middle. And then I'm just going to do a very uh, sort of, I'm going to snap the deck. You grab the sides and you buckle it, you snap, buckle it up. You get a nice snapping set. A bit of match, boom. Now I'm going to use a, a move I've featured on this channel before. Frank Garcia's move, topper, and I do it a little differently. I'm going to apparently pull this off, but what in fact I'm going to do is square that with my fingers and drag the top card off and do it all in one smooth action. And boy, oh boy, that is a shocking restoration of a just torn card. Looks great. Boom, there's the four. Pause a beat there. Say, well, look, if we did something weird with a four like that, now let's try something. And I, tr I pretend, when I turn this over, okay, I know that the card I tore the entire time and is in the middle with the piece still is the king. I know that. But I say, uh, the four here, we did something weird with the four. Now let's try something with the, and I plant a beat. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. As I pull this over and look up and go, king, with the king. And I miscall this, with the king. Slip this in the front. Square it in legitimately. Snap it again. 
you riffle the back end and beautifully, nice moment, boop. Little corner flies out there, boop. Little homage there to Daryl. Spread through here and turn these over. Everything can be examined. It's one of these really pretty pieces of magic that leaves everything on the table and people have this really satisfying sense of complete mystery.